Hello, Steve White Trick Boy 89 for Steve Arts 89, Star Trek's Gatekeeper. Um, Star Trek Discovery Season 4, Episode 11? Is it 11? Yeah, 11, Rosetta. Um, it was an interesting episode. Uh, it was kind of slow. Um, not a lot happened, and that just seemed incredibly odd considering they have so few hours to actually save the universe. So I found that kind of frustrating all the way in the episode. The, the somber pace and tone of the direction and the dialogue and everything, I'm like, where is the urgency, people? You've got 29 hours at the start of the episode, and then after the mission you've got 25 hours, and you're all just... Yeah, so that was an issue for me. But um, basically, again, they've got 29 hours, but instead of going straight to make first contact, Burnham believes they need to go down to this planet, which is um, a gas giant that's lost all its um, gas, basically. It was burnt off by a bunch of meteorites or something. They explained it at the start of the episode, and I suddenly can't remember what they said. Um, but they believe it's where the Tennessee lived. So they go down, and they find a structure uh, that has been reinforced, which is like the only one on the planet, because the rest are just ruins. And um, they go down um, Detmar, Colbert, Saru, and Burnham in EV suits. And um, Detmar's one has yellow on it, and Colbert's one has white, but Saru and um, Burnham's just have silver, and I'm like, they should have gone with the colours, because it's hard to tell them apart, and that's part of the reason why they use different colours in Star Trek, so you can tell people apart from a distance. Um, different divisions and commands and so forth. Now, um... While all this is happening, Book and Taka, um, who are hiding somewhere nearby, uh, decide they need to get into the ship, set up some sort of patch to s connect to some engineering element, um, and basically piggyback on the Discovery so they can get into the um, hyperfield. And the plan is to get in there and um, disconnect the power source and save the universe, basically. So they get aboard the ship, and the whole time I'm thinking, how do the systems not see them? They're saying, oh, um, the sensors, we've, we've basically hidden us from the sensors, from, um, and I'm like, but wouldn't they have visuals? Wouldn't they, wouldn't every corridor have multiple cameras, so if we can see everything, like, how are they just walking around and no one knows they're on the ship? I kind of had trouble with that. I get how they can block sensors and they wouldn't actually appear on scans and so forth, but... Um, so little things like that that were bugging me, um, but, um, Taka thinks that, of course, Book is going to, um, um, break when he sees Michael and he's not going to be able to, once he's back with his crew, um, that is like a family to him, he's not going to be able to go through with it. But, um, he does, and he actually engages the general who is, um, the one who I think is in charge of Earth now, and he gets her to agree to help him, um, and she says, look, if we get to, like, the red zone, which is, I guess, a time period where they're, um, they're determined, and we haven't sort of got a resolution, or if there's a resolution before that, we'll stand down, but if not, I'll help you, basically. So I'm willing to help you as a backup plan. I'm not sort of willing to go in all on this. Um, and they managed to get by a lot of this by um, sabotaging the, um, the replicators on the ship. So they can distract the engineering crew to get in, and he's trying to set something up. And he and unfortunately, he gets caught by um, Jet Reno, and he kidnaps her and takes her hostage. So when Book comes back to him afterwards, when they've sorted out everything they had to do, she's like, "Oh, well, you weren't expecting a hostage, were you?" Um, so yes, yeah, she had a few scenes with um, Blue. Um, she wants to know Detma better, but she was afraid to approach her. She admires her, and she was talking about her and that, and so they had a few little moments with her, and that's what I mean. There was just no sense of urgency in the episode about, um, and Michael was tense the whole time because she was carrying the weight of it all, and she was the one who decided, okay, let's just stop in the middle of this mission and take a few hours to go down, just based on my sense that there's something on that planet, and if we can learn it, we'll have a better chance with first contact if we understand something about the species. Um, cultural context was what she said we needed. Um, so again, they go down, and Saru starts to um, freak out and, and fear the coming of death and so forth, like he used to. And that unsettles them all. Then Colbert starts, and he had hallucinations, and Colbert starts having the same thing. 
Eventually Burnham does, but Detnava doesn't. They realise it's in the dust that she never touched, and they realise that the, all the dust are some sort of protein or... Um, I wrote down what they were, but now I cannot find it. Um, but they convey emotions. So they, they go inside this space... And they basically find out it's like a cocoon, it's like a nursery. That's why it was reinforced, because that's where all the babies were, essentially. And the whole place is full of these jellyfish sort of creatures that look like they're just dead brown things just floating. Um, there's a lot of bones, and it's quite spectacular in the detail and the design, but it's very dark, so you still can't really see it. I sort of forgot, and I kept looking, going, there's actually a lot of work in that background there. So it's interesting to look at, but again, like everything else on Discovery, it's too dark. Um, and... Um, yeah, they sort of realise, okay, these space species value life, value young, protected young. Um, they felt emotions. We should be able to emphasise with these people. We should be able to communicate with them. We're not dealing with monsters, you know. So they felt like they had achieved something. They went back to the ship and they spoke to the diplomats. And one of the diplomats is this um, Asian guy with grey hair and he's really blunt and he's kind of funny and um, he just says stuff. And he kind of bothered the president and she came and had a word to him and he was... He sort of likes ancient Earth things, like he was the one who made the um, the three-hour tour, Gilligan's Island, referenced in the episode before, and he was playing, um, um, what was it, Monopoly or something? Not Monopoly. Um, he was basically doing word um, word puzzles and stuff. And the president came and told him off and said, you need to show these people support. I know you're looking at the big picture, but the little people doing the little tasks need to feel like they're supported so they can do all the work that we need to get to that. So he sort of pulled his head in a little bit because he started to sort of say, well, great, you got us some information, you know, but the Rosetta needed two um, languages to s decipher the third because the Rosetta Stone was what they used to decipher the um, Egyptian hologlyphs and so forth and blah, blah, and that's what, what, that's what the episode is called and what they sort of referred to as what they found as the Rosetta to sort of communicating with them. And then he turns around and goes, but good job, guys, did you really good job? And he played it fairly well. Um... What else happens? Oh, Colbert spent a little bit of time, the doctor spent a little bit of time lingering in the nursery because when they were outside they were feeling the panic of all the aliens that died. When they were inside they were feeling the warmth and comfort and love and security and peace of the children and um, being in the nursery and being nursed and being children. And he said it felt really good. Um, and she sort of said, well, you're going through a lot. No one here is going to feel okay. No one can be okay. So it's okay that you're not okay. Um, and they deal with Detmer's emotional issues in this episode where, like, um, one of the um, critics of Star Trek was saying that all the characters are all damaged, they all have a, um, a tragic story. Um, and hers was that her mother died and her father couldn't connect with her, so she always felt disconnected. So she didn't really relate to these feelings of um, peace and all that from the childhood and love and that. Um, so she was having a moment. And Saru was sort of dealing with his fear. Um, and Detmer was a little bit rattled, and Blue, um, Blue's character, um, Adira, or Adora, I want to call her Adora, because that was, that's, the name reminds me of the name from He-Man, but she approaches her at the end of the episode, and she's invited to sit and talk, so she manages to make some connection there. Um, Colbert decides, I think, to relax a little bit, um, and not feel like he's doing it all, but he, his main concern is that, okay, we have engaged this species, we've found out they have emotions, but yet they still manage to destroy planets. So if they have no empathy, how can we deal with them? Because um, Michael was saying empathy is the only way to actually um, communicate. It's the only way to connect with people. So we need to have empathy. We need to understand these people. And that's true, unless they don't have any. <laughs> so that's what he's worried about. Now, I can't think of anything else in the episode. Um, what am I up to? I'm up to nine minutes. Yeah, I should be fine. I'll just finish on ten. I try to keep them to ten minutes. It's a bit tricky. But, um... Yeah, it was just, outside of the the overall problem that they're in, the episode was fine, but when you f sort of feel it in the context of the whole mission that they're on, the, 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 the direction, the tone, the, the, the somber feeling was all wrong. There should have been tension, there should have been a sense of, of urgency, we have to get this done. And everyone is just relaxed, and I'm like... <laughs> It was even brought up in the episode, though, someone was saying, how can you be so relaxed with, you know, everything's about to be destroyed. Um, but yeah, I did, I did feel like the, 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 the tone of the show, the episode was all off. 
But um, the overall story was interesting, but it was very much a small story and just seems really random and out of place in the structure of the overall series. But um, I do appreciate that we have had a bunch of separate stories within one sort of overarching story as opposed to just chapters in one story. It is different from the other seasons and how they're telling the story. So, you know, I shouldn't complain too much. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. Um, I'm not sure what going to happen in the next two episodes and how they're going to deal with all this in two episodes. They do tend to set up a lot of stuff and then rush through it at the end of the season in the last episode, which they've done in other seasons. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.